Good morning everyone. This demo is going to show you how to make a shaded sphere. Okay, so we're going to try to take a flat sheet of paper and create the illusion of depth and the illusion of three dimensions by creating a sphere. So I'm going to take a little object here and I'm going to be using a regular number two pencil. And I'm just going to trace this object. I'm going to do it kind of lightly. I don't want this to be a permanent circle. I may want to get rid of it at one point. So I want it to be pretty light. All right. And so right now it's a shape. It's flat, right? So this is a shape. But we're going to turn it into a form. All right. And we're going to do it with value. Make it, make it look like there's light, but it's not. We're all going to do this with just values with our pencil. So I'm going to try to show you an outcome here um, based on using this 2D, uh, two, number two pencil. And then I'll show you, I'll touch it up maybe with my other pencils. I may use these, I may not. I definitely will use this at the end to kind of show you how to punch up some darks later on. We'll talk about that in a minute. But right now I'm establishing my light source. Okay, and like many definitions or many terms in art, uh, the, the definition is just the words backwards. So the light source is the source of light. That's the source where the light's coming from. So we're going to pretend like our light's coming from right here and hitting right there. So if it hits right here, it's going to create a highlight. So I'm going to very, very lightly trace out my highlight to let me know that's where I want my highlight to be when I'm done. Okay, I don't want that line to be there when I'm done. Though. Okay, I want to get rid of that line. And if my light is coming here and it hits right here first and creates a highlight, it's going to slowly wrap around and cause a, a gradient. All right, so it's going to slowly get darker and darker as it goes as the light is less able to bend around the object. And eventually it's going to be blocked here. So if it hits here, it's going to be blocked here. So we're going to get a really dark shadow right here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay in a dark. I'm just kind of illustrate my point. And one thing we want to do is we want to make sure our shadows are round. So we want our shadows to follow our sphere. Okay. All right. And so we're going to have a shadow right here, a very rich, dark shadow. I'm going to slowly layer lead on here to get it darker and darker. If you try to get all your darkness on in one pass, what will end up happening is you will flatten out the bumps on your paper. We kind of talked about that uh, last time. And if you ruin that tooth on your paper, then your lead's going to go on inconsistently and it, it's not going to be uh, consistent with the rest of your piece. So we want unity. We don't want one part to be very smooth paper and then the other part to be textured paper. That'll ruin our unity. All right. And then if the light's hitting here, it's blocked here, that means we're going to get a cast shadow somewhere around in here. All right. And so this is going to be a very dark shadow. And you see how much uh, ground I'm able to cover when I turn my pencil sideways? Once again, that lead width makes a difference. So I'm just going to shade this in one time. Real quick. Get one layer of lead on here. And we'll see how dark I can get it with just this regular number two pencil. This is not a drawing pencil. This is a number two pencil. Like you take standard te standardized tests with. Normal pencil for class. <clears throat> We're probably all very familiar with this by now at this stage in our education. And if you notice this pencil, this one, some of them do this, some of them don't. You see, it'll say, uh, it'll say HB on it. So that means it's a in-between pencil. If it were a drawing pencil, it's the in-between stage. So you can use this as a drawing pencil. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is what you have at home. Uh, that's fine. And so that's why I'm showing you this. All right. So this is much too light for my shadow. I'm going to have to come back in and fill it in later. But what I want to start demonstrating to you, I'll start darkening up my shadow here. Because I want to show you this right here. 
Remember we talked about the light hitting here, creating a highlight, slowly bending around, being blocked right here, and then casting a shadow because the light's being blocked. And then it bounces all around the room and some of it ends back up on this side. And that right there is your reflected light. Now it's probably not going to be as bright as the highlight, so I will fill it in some, but this is one of the things, one of the steps that students forget the most is the reflected light step. So I want to leave that kind of light. I might darken it a little because that reflected light's not going to be as bright as a highlight. Okay, but that's going to distinguish between our cast shadow and our, our end of our sphere. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and lay in some values. This may help you, it may not. But this is one of the ways I like uh, to show uh, students who are new to this how to do it. So I'm going to color this in. I'm going to shade this in very, very dark. Try to achieve the darkness that I want to have overall. This is going to be the darkest part of my shadow, right? This is where the light's being blocked the most. So we talked about how that light bends and curves just a little. Just a little. All right. Maybe just we'll make it a little thicker, maybe. This is our ultra dark shadow here. I'll come back at the end and show you what we can do with that ebony pencil. Okay, so we laid it in our dark, dark, dark. Now I'm going to come back maybe and put in a layer of a little bit darker or a little bit lighter than this shade right here. Once again, I'm turning my pencil so that I can utilize the full quickness of my lead. Uh, this is one of the reasons we don't like mechanical pencils in art. Uh, it helps us create really fine lines and we don't have to uh, sharpen them, right? So that's nice. But at the same time, you have less control over them because you can't manipulate the size of that lead. No matter how much you turn a mechanical pencil, that pencil's still going to write at a 0.5 lead, right, or something like that. Was it 0 0.05? I don't know what that what that stands for. I'm not a big mechanical pencil person. So I'm going to go over this several times, start darkening it up more and more and more. Get the value I want. I want it to be a little lighter than this one right here, than the one in the back. Once again, I'm still following the shape of my sphere. So I will fast forward here and just kind of keep sectioning these out. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and fade around a little bit here to my highlight. So I want to go ahead and erase go ahead and erase those marks because I don't want them there. So I want this to slowly fade into that highlight. I don't want you to be able to tell where the highlight ends and the shading begins. It just kind of fades into it. And that's kind of the goal for the rest of this as well. Okay. So I'm going to come back over here. And you see there's a very distinct line between these different values. So this is very, very dark. This is very, very, uh, this is pretty dark, but not as dark as that. And so what I want to come and do is stay on this side of the line. So this is the dark side. This is the lighter side. I want to stay on the lighter side of the line. And I want to start teasing. I'm going to lightly start laying down lead. You see how I'm doing it? Um, sometimes I'm going higher than other times. Sometimes I'm staying real close to that line. Sometimes I'm working my way all the way up. And you'll start to see this line blur. Okay, and so it'll fade from here to here without you being able to tell where does one end and where does the other begin. And that's what we want to do. We want to do that all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward again.
All right, so now that I've got this done, this is all faded and blended, I wanna go to my next ring. And then once again, I'll stay on the lighter side and tease this, add a little bit of lead each little pass, a little bit at a time, trying to be kind of random and never, you know, kind of fading and feathering that value up till it fades away. And I'll do that all the way across. I got a little inconsistency here. I don't like all color in between it. All right, now I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so anywhere we have any inconsistencies, I will roll my racer across them again kind of like and bump my eraser into them, kind of like we did before. Now that that is just about complete, I'm gonna clean up my edges. And then I'm going to, I can try to eliminate my line right here. So that'd be definitely a worthy endeavor for you guys because lines aren't how we see things. Uh, they aren't drawn with outlines. We see the differences because of the different values. All right, now I'm going to come through and darken up my shadow with this ebony pencil. So you see we get a really rich, dark, value with this so if you're in class you may want to use this All right, so then I'm just going to label my reflected light. And my cast shadow. Voila.